Now, if you would have told me that on one picture that is his son and on the other picture that's the father, I would have believed you. Now, on the after picture, the man is actually 27 years old. Now, again... What's up folks, it's Uranus from Brussels, welcome to another video. So in this video today we'll be talking about the 10 most common side effects of steroids or performance enhancing drugs. I've been training in the gym for pretty much 9 years now and I've gone to 30 to 40 different gyms and it's always the same story coming back over and over again regarding gear usage. So in this video I will give you my top 10 reasons not to do steroids. I'm not natural by the way, I've been on hormonal replacement therapy for just about a decade too because my body is incapable of producing the necessary hormones. Now, have I ever taken more than what is prescribed to me by my doctor? Yes, absolutely. I want to be 100% transparent about that. I'm actually making this video for a lifelong natty friend of mine who recently got 100% back into the lifting game but who wants to turn to the dark side. Now steroids it's always going to be a personal choice but here are 10 things that you absolutely need to hear before throwing your natty card away. All right, c'est parti! Number 10, it's never just one cycle. Steroids create dependency. Once you see the results, you will instantly be hooked. You will barely be in the half of your first freaking cycle that you will already be thinking about the second one and about adding another compound and so on. Lots of guys in the gym started like that. They wanted to try just one little cycle, maybe two little cycles, just like that, just to gain a little bit of muscles, just to have the edge. They just wanted to try it out and 25 cycles later and five years later, they're sh still shooting gear in their ass. You have to be aware of that. We gym rats, we love to see progress and of course taking steroids you can easily make two or three years of natty growth. You can easily have that kind of work done in a couple of months just on steroids. So it's never just one cycle alone and it can really create dependency. I was hooked man. I was hooked because you know my body just grew in front of me. Number nine you probably already know this you don't know a lot of details about it is that taking steroids will actually make your own body stop producing its own hormone you will disrupt your own production of hormones especially the ones produced by your balls down there by taking ex exogenous androgens you disrupt the signal that is being sent by your pituitary gland in your brain to your testicles and that feedback mechanism we call it the hpta well by introducing exogenous hormones by that fucking needle in your ass you will disrupt the connection between your testicles and your brain. When you will be on cycle, you will be called, you will be so-called shut down. Your testicles are no longer working, and thus you might experience shrinkage, you might experience smaller loads, and you might experience a decrease in fer fertility. Now, that's only the testosterone part, but you can also create a lot of imbalances in other hormones in your body, like, for example, estrogen and prolactin. In other words, you can end up looking great, but actually feeling like garbage because your own body is no longer regulating itself. And most people don't know shit about this. This is actually a very recurrent topic regarding steroids is that you don't know what the hell you are doing. Like I saw some cycle examples that included Boldenone or Equipoise, for example. And most people don't even know that that drug wasn't originally developed for humans. It was developed for freaking horses. But most people don't even study about that and they don't know shit about what they're doing. I once asked a guy in the gym that was taking over a gram of testosterone per week if he had any aromatization problem, problems on that dosage and the guy didn't even knew what aromatization was. Which brings me to my next topic. Once the cycle ends, you have to go you have to try to reactivate your own hormonal productions or you have to go on PCT or post-cycle therapy. I knew a guy that did his first cycle in the gym, he was just about 22 or 23 years old. The cycle was with a coach but it was horribly designed because it was the guy's very first cycle and he was already on stuff like Trenbolone and a bunch of different compounds and so on. Now his muscle building results were absolutely great but once he had to do PCT his coach disappeared. Now the guy being still 22 or 23 thought he was actually still young and he would recover by itself. So three months later, he was 69ing with his date and there was nothing going on down there, like literally dead in the water, completely erectile dysfunction. So he took his date and all his shit 
and he went to the ER where he actually learned that his testosterone levels were dead in the water. He then had to take another appointment with a doctor, wait for a lot of time. This is Belgium. He, had then, he then had to go on PCT, on drugs like Novadex, maybe HCG, maybe Clomid, in the hopes of recovering its own testosterone production. But six months later, the guy had lost all his gains and his own testosterone levels were still not where they were supposed to be. PCT will not work for everyone and the chances that you will end up on lifelong hormonal replacement therapy are clearly there. You need to be aware of that. Before starting steroid, ask yourself the question if you accept the consequences and the potential risk of never having your own testosterone production coming back and ending up on lifelong treatment. Are you ready to putting needles in your ass for the rest of your life and having to book appointment with doctors and having blood works and having to travel with hormones and so on. If the answer is no, well then it's very simple. Don't take fucking steroids because that risk of ending up on HRT is really, really high. And regardless of your age, young people actually think that they will recover without any problems. But there are a fuckload of examples out there online of young people that never recover. Take this example. This guy was 21 years old. He was called Isaiah Miranda. He's actually still called Isaiah Miranda. I hope he's still alive. And he did a bunch of SARMs and other shit and he never recovered his own testosterone production. At 21, his testosterone levels were 21 nanograms per day sleep. That's extremely, extremely low. Larry Wills, even more famous, it's exactly the same thing. He was never able to get his own testosterone production back. And that was already in his freaking teens, I believe. So be aware of that. Your hormone production might not come back. Moving down to number seven. You don't keep the gains. How many guys have I seen in the gym that in a couple of months gain 30 pounds of muscle and then over the next couple of months, they lose all of it to fall back to exactly where they were before. That's because your gains from steroids are not permanent. You gain a shitload of muscle on the cycle and you feel like Superman when you're on the juice. But after that, at some point, you have to stop, give your body some rest and try to get your own hormonal production back doing PCT and so on. So let's say you gain five or seven kilograms of net muscles on your first cycle. That's freaking great. But after that, you're going to have to fight to keep those freaking gains and hoping that PCT is going to work and that's going to be one hell of a challenge. And it's not fun actually seeing your gains melt in the freaking mirror. After being in a gut state, you have the steroids in your body, working out, everything is going great. Those veins are popping, you're gaining a shitload of muscles. After that, you have to stop the hormones and you're really going to feel freaking down and your muscles are going down, your lifts are going down and so on. You felt like a god and now you're feeling like Crap. Unless you're blasting and cruising all the time, most of those games won't be permanent. Are you ready for this? Now, a lot of guys cannot handle the highs and lows, which brings me to my next point. Number six, depression. Steroids can actually create depression in a certain type of individuals. Well, first of all, there are the hormonal imbalances. When you're no, your body is no longer itself regulating its hormones, you might be a little bit too high on some of them, might be a little bit too low on other ones. Estrogen balance, for example, is super important for your mood. PCT will also be a clusterfuck of a mind up and down your, your hormones, your mood. It's not always going to be very fun. You might also never recover your own testosterone production and have to live with low testosterone for quite some time. Manu Bennett, for example, is an, exa is an example of an actor who admitted he took steroids for the roles of Crixus in uh, Spartacus, Gods of the Arena. It's a series and he fell into depression once he stopped and he had to go on PCT, probably because his gains melted and his hormones were all over the place. Anyway, at least that's one example from an actor that's actually honest about having to take steroids to play a certain role and having a certain physique. Number five, body dysmorphia. Steroids can create body dysmorphia. How many guys don't you know in the gym that have a freaking amazing body, like they could have a statue of themselves outside of that gym, huge muscles, ripped all year long, a global positioning system of veins on their forearms, and yet they feel like shit about themselves. I'm too small, I'm a little bit fat, my calves look like shit, and so on. Look at this picture, for example. By the way, I'm not judging the person, I'm just using it for an example. I'm sure this transformation took 
a lot of work and dedication to be achievable. But this transformation from natty to not natty at 22 years old in three years time is still quite shocking to me. Now the guy looked freaking amazing before taking steroids. Now three years later, yeah sure, he has 10 kilograms of net muscles more on his frame and he's looking thick skin shredded, but do you really think he's satisfied about them himself and stopping there? I'm not sure. He also lost half of his hair in the process, which brings me to my next point. Number four, hair loss. It's not a coincidence that a lot of bodybuilders are bald after all. If you are prone to male pattern baldness and your hair follicles have already started miniaturizing because of the DHT before you take steroids, well, taking steroids will greatly accelerate that process of balding. You want to keep a full head of hair, it's very simple. Don't touch freaking steroids. The thing with hair loss is that you will also not immediately see it. Mostly you will see it when you have already lost more than 50% of the density of your hair on your scalp. And at that point, it's usually too late to do something and to gain back that ground. Once it's gone, it's gone and there are no miracle solutions. Yeah, sure, you can hop on medication like finasteride and minoxidil, and so on, but then you're just fighting evil with even more evil. If you love your hair and you wanna keep hair on your head, don't touch freaking steroids. Number three, aging. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this point. I will just show you a recent example I stumbled upon. He's an IFBB pro. His name is Josef Gvetten. I'm probably not uh, pronouncing that correctly because the man is from Czechia. But anyway, here is the example. Now, if you would have told me that on the one picture that is his son and on the other picture that's the father, I would have believed you. Now, on the after picture, the man is actually 27 years old. Now, again, I'm not judging the person because this kind of transformation, it certainly took a lot of dedication, a lot of discipline and a lot of hard work regardless of the steroids. I'm not judging the person, I just want to demonstrate that the stress you are putting your body under when you're taking steroids, well, it's accelerating the aging process greatly. This is a transformation, by the way, from 2016 to now. Number two, the damages that steroids can do to the rest of your freaking health. Most people have no idea what they're doing. You ask them how steroids work, they will just answer you, it goes where it has to go and it does what it has to do. Now we've already talked about the hormonal problems, the hair loss, the aging, but the rest is potentially life-threatening too. Taking steroids can have negative effect on your cardiovascular system, on your heart, it can elevate your blood pressure, you have more risk of strokes and so on, it can create, create inflammation in your liver, organ enlargement, prostate issues, water retention, erectile dysfunction, that one might be life-threatening too. And lastly, you have a bigger risk of having injuries because your muscles are growing and are adapting, but not necessarily your uh, joints, ligaments, and uh, tendons. Number one, the mental side effects of taking steroids, and this is very often being overlooked. People think steroids, it's all about those biceps, those gains that you're making and so on, but you need to realize this shit can actually really change you fundamentally. You can have mood swings, aggression, uh, some behavioral changes, indifference towards other people. I'm not saying that this will happen to everyone, but your entire personality can actually be affected by you taking steroids. No human was meant to walk around on earth with the testosterone levels of a freaking bull shark. This will actually also affect your relationships with other people. Now, I'm not saying that this is for everyone, but I put it at number one because it's very often overlooked. If you have mental issues before starting gear and you have difficulties keeping a cool head, this will not be better once you're on gear and it can actually be a lot worse than you think. Breakups and divorces have actually happened because of people taking gear. Be aware of that before starting to put a needle in your ass. This can pretty much affect your personality. So this was my take on the potential side effects of taking steroids and the 10 reasons not to do them. So evalu evaluate your positives and your negatives, see what works for yourself and do it for the right reason, do it responsibly, do your blood work, inform yourself, do your freaking follow-up.
too. Now, I also forgot to mention that the PCT, the steroids, the doctor's appointments that you're going to have to take afterwards, the blood work and so on, it can all be costly. So evaluate if you really want that for your freaking life and above all, do it for the right freaking reasons. All right, ending it here. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the video and if you agree with my 10 points, I'll catch you on the next one. Subscribe to my channel. Uranus out.